Isn't this an amazing season where our hearts are just warmed with love? We want to we want to give. We want. I was I was thinking about Christmas and what what Christmas and what the season really means to me. And uh, over the years, as I've gotten a little bit older, it's like it means even different things than it than it did when I was younger. But the things that I really treasure and the things that I value now, it's like realizing what, what, what Christmas is about. It's about giving, right? It's about giving and it's about gifts. And I was thinking, so why do we give? Why, why do we give gifts? It's because we love, right? You love somebody and you want to just give them a gift. You want to bless them, right? Yeah, we give because we love. We give because we love. I was just thinking, and I was also thinking, what is some of the most important gifts that I've received over the years? And I, and I, I was really pondering that. I was thinking about that just this morning. Some of the most important gifts, the most valuable gifts that I've received. And, and I began, you know, really it's been relationships. What do I value the most in my life right now? And it's, it really is relationships. And I, I can look out across this congregation and think of all of the people that I, that I now have relationships. And I, I, I love to be with them, and I love to, to give to them, uh, to pour into them, even to give gifts. One of the things that, that Renee and I have, uh, have done, we, we built a new house, um, and as far as size and all goes, she won in the negotiations. And, but it's been such a blessing to us. We're, we're, we're able to, to bring several people together at one time, and we, and we can just all get together and, and continue to build on the relationships that we already have established. You know, it's like, oh, it's, it's really heartwarming to be able to do that. And one thing that we did discover is like, Renee doesn't like to just cook all the time. She's a, a wonderful, a fabulous cook, but that's not something she just loves to do continuously, like her sister Val. Just saying. But, <laughs> but she's learned, we've learned together, that, man, there's two restaurants in town that do a really good job of stuff to go. We put an order in, we can spread it across the, the, the island that we have there, and, and we can really serve people. That way we can spend time, we, we can spend our time working on, developing, and establishing, enhancing, let's say, those relationships. We don't have to spend all of the time working, cooking, cleaning up, right? Yeah. So, I think that's been a really, a really cool thing for us. And, and I think of... I was thinking about, uh, about relationships and, and so oftentimes how relationships get started and it's because somebody introduced me to someone. Like, oh, a great example. I was thinking, how many of you know or remember Dave Reaver? Guy that got his, so much of his face, like, like whoa. Uh, uh, that was amazing. It's like one of our, our, our congregants, Rick Lebrun, he, under, he just told me about this guy and I was like, he said, I think it's somebody that you would like to meet. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm open, I'm game. Then, then he showed up in the area, and Rick said, hey, he's here. It's like, okay, now I'm going to have to figure out that time. Yes, I do want to meet him. Got to meet Dave Reaver, and, and, and the relationship then was established with Dave. As soon as I met Dave, there was just like a heart connection. I just fell in love with that guy. He was like, it was, it was amazing. And I wanted to spend more time with him. We, we unloaded the Harleys. We took a, a really a fun ride, he and his wife, and, and Renee and I, and her first time on the back of my Harley. But she loved it. She loved it. You know, we had a great time, and, and, and we made several stops, and we got, to, we got to know them because we spent time with them. And we ate together probably three or four times with, with, with Reavers. And, and, and developed a bond and a relationship and, and a connection. It's like, that was amazing. And think, Rick is the one that introduced us, but it's not up to Rick for us to establish or build a relationship with, with Reavers. There, there was a heart connection, and we built, we spent time together and, and built a relationship. We had a, a couple over at our home 
a week ago, fr Friday night, uh, an amazing couple of friends that we've made, and, and they're, they, they're over 14 congregations. He's over 14 congregations and six campuses. I think we probably would refer to that as an apostle, someone that's speaking into uh, several different congregations and, and churches. And man, what, what an amazing time. It's a great connection that <clears throat> we were able to make. It was somebody that introduced him to me. Then we've built on that relationship, and it, uh, it's been awesome. It, it's been incredible. Uh, and them sitting in our home as we continue to build relationship. I think... Uh, Man, something, somebody that's become really important to us is, is Prophet uh, John Harkey. It's like, how many really appreciate Harkey's ministry? It's like, wow. They, they so bless us, and they love to come to Valley. The atmosphere, the, the, you know, the presence of God. John and Meliana, they, they love to come here. But that was a, it was an, <clears throat> a connection, an introduction that was made. But the one who introduced <clears throat> excuse me, to John, uh, me, Renee and I, to John and Meliana, is not the one that's responsible for that relationship and for that connection. Once he's introduced us, it's our responsibility to build on that relationship. Right? Yeah. And we've established an amazing relationship. And they, and they call us and say, you know, we're, we want to come, we want to come, we want to come, we want to be a part of Valley. We, we think of Valley like family now. And, and they've spent time in our home. It's, it's really interesting the, when you ask them, it's like, so John, where would you guys like to eat? You said, well, can't we just go to your house? Like, and Renee's saying, can't we just go to a restaurant? <laughs> it's like, so we spend time in our, in our house where we get to sit around, you know, the big table. And some of you have been, have been in our, even when Harkies were there. You know, we, we invite other people to, to, to build more relationship and spread it out, and more connection. It's like, but the one that introduced me to Harkies has nothing to do with the continued relationship that I have with John and Meliana, Right? I am going somewhere with this, and I will figure it out soon. <laughs> now, the, 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 the gift of the relationship, it, uh, f probably five or six years ago, we ended up having opportunity to meet and spend time with Marie Osmond. Ooh, Lynn's name dropping now. <laughs> and about half of you out there don't have any idea who that is, because you're a little too young, but... <laughs> They were like television superstars and singers and amazingly gifted, gifted people. And after we were introduced to them, even Donnie and Marie both, but particularly Marie, we ended up becoming friends with them and, and establishing relationship there. And it's been, it, it's been awesome and amazing. And it has led to a series of events because of the connection that was, that was made there. And it's been, uh, it's, it's been awesome. It's been incredible. And I thank God for all of the relationships that he allows us, doors that he opens for us to get into. And each one of us need to do that same thing. Thank God for our friends, for the relationships that we have and the opportunities that we, that, that, that we get and that we have. And, and again, I'd say the doors that open for us if we will step in and, and build those relationships. Again, I say the person that has introduced me in each one of those relationships doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the relationship that I have with each one of those people now. Oh, I left out David Archuleta. If I'm going to drop names, a bunch of you would know David Archuleta. Man, we've got to spend time with him. He's been in the service here, spent a couple hours back in our office back there. So when they're asked, do you know Lynn Hardy from Valley Church, You're like, yes, we have relationship. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, I know Lynn. Yeah, I know Lynn. And it's great to be known by some, some amazing people. Uh, I got to shake hands with J.R. Simplot, with Jack Simplot. He was a keynote speaker at my graduation in 1970, clear back in the 1900s. I was shaking hands with Jack Simplot. It's like, 
Great to meet you, Jack. Now, that's not somebody that would have remembered me. I was one of 200 kids that walked across and shook hands with, with Jack, but still, I'm name dropping a little. So, I think of what is been, been introduced to some pretty, you know, some pretty amazing people, uh, some significant opportunities in, in business of people that I've been introduced, you know, that, that had made my business grow and, and, and taught me and all. And I think, oh man, it's awesome to be introduced to these people. But then I think, what is the absolute most important introduction that I've ever had in a relation building opportunity? And it's when I was introduced to Jesus Christ. And, I, and I, I think of, the, of that time when I was introduced to Jesus and the, that relationship, what, what, what became of that relationship, and that it really doesn't have anything to do from that point, for, from that point forward. It's not any more responsibility on that person that introduced me to Jesus other than teaching me a little bit more, a little bit more. Well, here's something that you probably should know about him. This would be awesome for you to know about him. That way you can even connect more quickly. But my relationship, I think of, of all of the different relationships, you know, uh, well, even between Renee and I, we talk about, we, if we were to talk about Marie Osmond, for example, her relationship with Marie is way different than mine. I would have to say because she's never danced with Marie but I have. I'll share a little bit of a funny story. One of the worst nightmares of my, that I could even imagine. It's not something that I've ever loved in the past, is like to get up in front of people and make a fool of myself, especially make a fool of myself. But we were, at, we were at one of their last performances and she came down the steps like this. We were sitting at a table right next to the stage and she came down and grabbed my hand, lifted me up and said, dance with me. I don't dance. A full sold out house. She says, well, at least twirl me then. So I said. Then I went down and sat next to my wife and said, did that really happen? <laughs> For the next hour and a half, every five minutes, I would feel her sh shake as she just sat there and remembered again and just laughed. It's like, Love to be the source of your joy, my dear. <laughs> Each one of us, after we've been introduced, building the relationship is our own responsibility, and each one of our, us has a, a very private relationship with Jesus once we've asked him to become Lord and Savior of our lives. I just think Christmas time, Christmas, the greatest gift we give because we love, the greatest gift that we can give anybody is an introduction to Jesus Christ. Just introduce somebody to Jesus Christ and then, and then, 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 I just think, wow, I was 19 years old, so that's been like over 30 years ago that, that I received <laughs> bunch of math wizards out there. Four people laughed at that. It's like, <laughs> yes, it was definitely way over 30 years ago. I, I was just thinking the, the, the freedom, the freedom. I, 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 whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Just thinking of what I, what, what I carried is something that I knew, I knew, I knew. In my college days, I knew there was something that I needed. I knew I was missing something in my life, something really important, a connection that I needed to have. I had this hole and I chased all over trying to figure out what that burning desire that I had to, to fill was. And I, I was chasing all kinds of things, trying to figure out that what, what, what it took, what would fill that burning desire that I had. And finally, it came to me one night in a little church, a really little church in Smarton, South Dakota, the Lord started speaking to me, what you need 
What you need, what you've been chasing, what you've been searching for is relationship with me, son. You've been doing all kinds of crazy and stupid things. And what you're wanting, what your true desire is, because everyone was created with this same thing, is to be reconciled into a relationship, a loving personal relationship with me. And when you have established that relationship, that spot right there that's yearning and burning for something is going to be filled. It's like, oh, yeah, that's clap worthy right there. And I received him that night. I, it wasn't, I mean, uh, again, I said, I, I never liked to end up to make a, f- a fool of myself in front of anybody. I received him that night in my bedroom. I listened to that message, and, and it, I was convicted by that message. I went into the home that I was staying, went into my bedroom, and asked Jesus to come into my heart to save me, to come into my life. And he did that very night. And the burden that I was carrying, the weight that was on my shoulders would just, whew, was gone, and I just felt the joy of the Lord. The weight was gone, and I just felt the joy all over me and say, that spot is filled. What I've been looking for, I have found. Thank you, Jesus. One of the, one of the kids... Oh, oh, one of the kids. Yeah, it was the preacher's kid right there. Was up here and read John 3.16. For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved that he gave. God so loved that he gave his only begotten son. The second verse that I have uh, is John 8.32 that says... You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Last week, or the last couple of weeks anyway, I I was preaching about when we put on the full armor of God, it is around our midsection we put on the belt of truth. The belt of truth. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. So when we have asked him and when we've received him into our heart and life, then he becomes like the center of who we are. Jesus at the center of it all. I remember that song, Jesus at the center of it all. It's like, that's where our core strength is. (laughs) Is We're strengthened by the belt of truth. That's Jesus Christ, our, our, our belief and our, what our, our foundation is built on. I got a, I want to interject this story. I got the most interesting yesterday morning, a text from somebody I haven't heard from for probably two or three years. And he was, he, in this text, he said, we, you know, we, we lived on a, on, a, on a mountain, on a hilltop in Parma, and, and there's a long driveway that comes up to the house. In that driveway, there are 40 English walnut trees planted. It's really cool that have been producing walnuts for many years now. And he said, the weirdest thing, he said, here not too long ago, and I remember it because it took down some trees around our house and big branches off trees, that there was a storm and a microburst. He said, and the weirdest thing, he said, it took every other tree out. It took 20 other trees out. Every other tree it took out. I have the text on the, on the phone over there. So I, he said, because the wind came through and, and every other tree was removed. And he said, the trees that were removed looked to be like those that produced the most fruit, the most walnuts. He said they were, you know, the big... He didn't say all of this in the very first text, but the bigger trees with the bigger branches that produced typically the most looked like they were all blown over, taken out. And it shook a lot of the nuts off the smaller trees. It it shook several of the nuts off. They were still, they were premature, but they were still okay. They were able to harvest those smaller nuts. But he said, what was incredible here at harvest time, which was fairly recently, I guess, those trees that survived the storm, those smaller 
appearing to be weaker trees with the less branches produce the biggest nuts they have ever harvested from those trees. I was like, wow, that's, that, that's really amazing. I mean, the Bible tells us that anything that can be shaken will be shaken as we enter into a, a certain time period. Anything that can be shaken. Would you not agree with me that a lot of things are being shaken right now? And I was thinking, it's like, wow, that's, that's, that, that's amazing. And thinking about, okay, you know, what appears to be that with the biggest branches, the best looking trees, all of the green branches sticking out there, really caught that wind, but that wind took them out because their roots weren't very deep. They didn't have very deep roots. Lots of branches, lots of foliage, really good-looking trees, looked to be the best producing trees, and it took them out. Those that survived were the ones with deeper roots that had to probably compete more with the other, you know, a little bit bigger trees that gets a little more sunshine, get, uh, grabbing probably shallower roots because they get the first water. And the other trees had to have roots that went down deep that then stood fast through the storm and after standing fast through the storm produced the biggest, best fruit that had ever been produced from those trees. It's like, wow, that's, that, that, that's pretty amazing, which led me then to uh, a scripture here that I want to read to you a psalm, Psalms 93. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Now the cedars in Lebanon, those were the amazing trees that they built beams out of and temples and all of, the, all of that. Those, moving on to verse 13, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. To what? To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. There is no unrighteousness in Jesus. Mm. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish like massive trees. They will bear fruit in old age. They'll be fresh and flourishing. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. And then verse 836, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. It's like, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. I, think I want to talk a little, a little bit about freedom when we think, well, what do you mean freedom? I've, I remember it's probably a few months back, maybe when I think a few months, it could have been a, a year ago. I was saying that we need to focus on the do-dos, not the don't-dos. <laughs> the do-dos and not the don't-dos. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And when we're set free, when Jesus Christ has come into our lives and we're co-laboring with Him, as I think Pastor Tim had mentioned a little bit earlier, that we're, we're together. We, we're, we've come into alignment with Him and we're beginning to sink our roots down in Jesus Christ. He is our belt of truth and we are rooted and grounded in love, in His love, in His his love in us and our love in him, rooted and grounded in his love, then we indeed are set free. Free from what, you might ask? That's a great question. I'm glad somebody asked. Free from what? Free from the bondage of sin. You know, when sin gets a hold of our life, which is our sinful nature, we're born with this. And when we're just following and chasing that sinful nature, it's just like I was talking about, there's something going on that we know needs to be filled. So we're chasing that fulfillment in all kinds of areas, in all kinds of directions, looking for, looking for, looking for, and we will never find it until we have been introduced and connected to Jesus Christ. 
then. Then and only then are we truly set free. And you say, set free? There are so many rules. There are so many things that you're not supposed to do. How could you say there's freedom in that, Pastor Lynn? Let me tell you how there's freedom in that. It's because there... there I remember a scripture where Jesus says, the enemy, the, the, the prince of the power of the air, the enemy, the devil is coming, but he has nothing in me. It's like when we're living, when we're chasing our sinful and lustful desires, that that, that, that becomes our focus, we're not into doing what we're called and created to do or to be. Every one of us was created with a purpose, and that purpose has something to do with the desire that he has, that he's actually put within our hearts, and until we're in alignment with him, till we've come in and accepted him into our hearts, we don't really even necessarily know what the desire of our heart is. That's why we chase all that crazy stuff. Does this make sense? So, there is a a, a peace and a, a freedom that comes in that, because until we have put ourselves in alignment with His will and purpose for our lives, we're chasing, always chasing something. Chasing something. So we are in bondage to sin. We need to be reconciled with God. And until we have confessed our sins, turned away from our sins, asked Jesus to be Lord and Savior of our life, that's not going to happen. But whom the Son sets free is free indeed. We walk in freedom when we're fulfilling our purpose. There's fulfillment in that. We get to feel it. We get to experience. We get to know it because we're walking in it. And there's freedom in that. In, verse, uh, in 2 Corinthians 3, 17, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. What is liberty? Liberty is freedom. Liberty and justice for all. Freedom and justice for all. That's what, we're, that's what our, our, this, this wonderful nation of ours was established on. Liberty, freedom, and justice for everyone. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is liberty. So we want freedom. We want to be in His presence. We want to be in living in His Spirit. We want to be in a place where the Spirit of the Lord abounds. The gift. We're down to Romans six twenty-three. The gift. The gift of God, that greatest gift of God, is eternal life in Jesus Christ. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. He offers a gift that all we have to do is receive, and then we have another level of of, of freedom and, and peace in knowing that we have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Not just here on earth, but we will spend the rest of eternity with Jesus. John 10.10 10 says, the enemy comes to kill, steal, destroy, but Jesus came that we would have abundant life, that we would have life and have it more abundantly. See, his desire for us is to bless us, for us to live in in abundance, to have abundance in our life, to be walking in abundance. In Galatians 5.1, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, the freedom by which Christ has made us free. Stand fast in that freedom, in that relationship that we have with Him. Do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Be free in Him. Don't get tangled up again in bondage, the bondage of sin. There's a bondage of sin. There's also a bondage of religion. It's not about religion. It's about that personal relationship with Him. 
See, we're promised another gift. That other gift is the Holy Spirit. Acts 2.38, down, down through there we read, you know, be baptized in the name of Jesus. Repent of your sin. Turn from your sin. And you will receive another gift. There's a gift of the Holy Spirit which will give you power, which will give you power, which will give you confidence. It's even referred to as an insurance policy. He will give you an insurance policy of the Holy Spirit like a stamp and a seal that says, you're going to heaven, you're coming to be with me. So Christmas time, <laughs> Jesus, that baby, he was the gift that God gave us all. It's followed up by the Holy Spirit, that gift that he promises to those who love him, to those who are baptized, to those who repent of their sins and step into freedom, into that personal relationship with him. And I just say everyone has a little bit of a different relationship with Jesus because he knows you. He knows everything about you. He knows how many times your heart beats. He knows when you're having struggles with anxiety, and he doesn't want you to be struggling with worries, cares, fears, anxiety. He wants you to have life and life abundantly. It is for freedom that Christ set us free. Stand firm. Don't take on that, that, that yoke of slavery, that yoke of bondage, either direction. We don't want to be so caught up in, it, it's, not about, it's not about religion, it's about Jesus and our relationship with him. I just say that again and again and again. Asking him into your heart to be your Lord, to be your Savior, and asking Holy Spirit to be your comforter, to be your guide. It's promised that he will come, he will lead you, he will guide you, he will direct you, he will give you the strength to accomplish what God's called you to do. So I just make I'm making a statement. Live your freedom today. Live your freedom today. Live your freedom today. Look, look to the Holy Spirit for direction. So we, don't, we don't need to look for all of the things. Don't, 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 don't. It's like because of my relationship with Him and the love affair that I have with Jesus Christ, I do, 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 do. Live your freedom today. Live the life that Jesus Christ has carved out for you, that he's freed you to live. Free to live, free to give, free to love. Free to live, free to give, free to love. Let's stand together and... and You know, I think this is just an incredible, you know, this is a wonderful opportunity. This is the Sunday before Christmas. On Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Easter, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Right now, we serve a resurrected Jesus Christ. And I think right now is just a, a, a perfect, a wonderful opportunity. His presence is here this morning. We've experienced it in worship this morning. And I, I, as, as I call upon his name, it's like, oh, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. We love you. We worship you. We praise your name this morning. But I can tell you that the only true freedom is the freedom that we experience when Jesus sets us free. I can tell you that the true peace the peace that surpasses all understanding is the peace that Jesus gives you when he says, son or daughter, I want to give you my peace. 
I give you my peace. That peace that passes any understanding that we can't even understand. Human comprehension doesn't even understand. But I want you to walk in that peace. He's saying this morning, I want each one of you to walk in that peace, in that liberty, in that freedom, where you're not worrying about what you've done, anything from your past. He says, I want to forgive anything and everything you've done in your past. I want you to walk in newness of life. I want you to become a new creation, walking with me, completely cleansed, completely healed of all of the hurts from your past. You can walk with a bounce in your step, knowing that you and I have now connected, that we will do this together. And if any of you have never made that commitment this morning, You've never asked Jesus to come into your life, never experienced the peace and the freedom that he has to offer you. I'll just encourage you, come up here and let's, let's pray together for just a few moments and let you experience that incredible peace that Jesus wants to give you this morning. You're ready to walk in the freedom that he has for you. Freedom from the bondage of sin, <laughs> freedom from the rules, the rules, Jesus is waiting. See, anybody that wants to come, he said, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and I have this gift for you this morning, this Christmas season, the best gift you could ever receive. If you've not received Jesus, it's available for you this morning. I'm going to pray. We'll just take a few more minutes and, and pray, and if if you feel the Holy Spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit was sent. He came to convict the world of sin for you to know that, you know, you're, you're, I got a plan for you and I really want to be able to love on you. All I ask that you do is come, that you submit your life and your will to me. I will be so quick to forgive every sin that you've ever committed. The slate will be wiped completely clean, completely clean. And you will walk in that freedom knowing that you are loved, that you are special, and that he's called you in to be with him. Father, I thank you that you're such a loving, gracious father. I thank you that you gave your son, Jesus Christ, that whoever would believe on him would not perish for their sins, but would be granted and given everlasting life. We so look forward to that everlasting life. But it's so wonderful to walk in covenant with you here on earth, walking in the freedom that you have set for us, knowing that we're loved. I just thank you that you are that Father. I give you praise this morning in Jesus' mighty name together we said amen may the lord bless you keep you make his face to shine upon you and give you the most amazing christmas that you've ever had i ask that in jesus name amen god bless you as you go